Solo Leveling by Chu Gong Chapter 39 Part 1 The Applicant Thud President Shigeo Matsumoto dropped to his knees. The head of an entire organization, the man who represented the interests of all hunters in Japan, was kneeling on the floor. Countless thoughts were racing through his head. Yet, try as he might, he could not think of any other method. There was no room for ego or honor. If everything was made public, it would result in more than losing his job. President Go, please forgive me. President Go's gaze was ice cold. President Matsumoto had been all bluster and bravado until the tables were turned on him. It'd be impossible for President Go to continue being cordial to him. Please get up. President Gokuli suggested that he drop the pointless apology, but this just compelled the Japanese man to stubbornly bang his head on the floor. Bam! Bam! Japan has lost more than half of its power when it comes to high-rank hunters, so we desperately need the international community's help going forward. Although Japan had an excellent hunter system, losing half of their S-rank hunters meant an uncertain future for them. Their existing hunters could easily handle A-rank dungeons, but there was no telling what would happen if an S-rank gate spawned. What had happened on Jeju Island could happen to Japan as well. If that recording gets out, we'll be completely alienated. I beg you, President Go, please think of the innocent people of Japan and forgive him. Consider this your punishment. President Go cut him off. Consider this punishment for the sin you and your hunters were planning to commit. A ticking time bomb that could explode at any moment. This was President Go's punishment. President Matsumoto continued prostrating himself on the floor. President Go, I will not get up until you forgive me. Please, please think this over one more time. Then you leave me no choice. With a displeased look on his face, President Go took out his cell phone. You have five minutes. What was that supposed to mean? He looked up at President Go, unable to ignore his curiosity. The Korean man waved his phone. If you don't leave here in five minutes, every reporter on this contact list will receive a text message saying that the president of the Hunters Association of Japan is on his knees begging me for forgiveness. If President Matsumoto was going to drag this matter out due to fear, then President Go was ready to detonate this time bomb right here and now. This was more of a warning to the Japanese men than an actual threat. But he bit his lower lip. President Go was an unyielding person who wasn't about to bend to emotional pleas. President Matsumoto had realized this fact too late. He had sacrificed his pride to shoot his last shot, and it had backfired on him. As he rose helplessly on wobbly legs, President Go set down his phone. Be thankful to Hunter's son. President Go's glare was like that of a beast. Because if our hunters had been hurt by your decisions instead of that monstrous ant, you wouldn't have made it out of this room alive. President Matsumoto packed his things with shaking hands and fled the association building without looking back. The confidence he displayed the last time he visited Korea was nowhere to be seen. You, President Gold leaned back on the couch. He felt immensely satisfied, but he wasn't done yet. It was no exaggeration to say that he held the fate of the Hunters Association of Japan in his hands. We all must atone for our sins. From a young age, He'd lived by the saying that what goes around comes around. Just then, the phone on the table rang loudly. Hmm? President Go picked up, and an urgent voice came through the receiver. His eyes went wide as he listened. What? A gate in the middle of the road? To make matters worse, it was a beer rank gate, which was more than what an ordinary strike squad could handle. Where? It would be best to contact one of the big guilds and have them deploy some of their hunters, but wait a minute. 
President Go raised an eyebrow at the information he just received. Isn't Hunter Sung's guild office near there? Traffic was building on the road. Inside one of the idling cars, Ji Wu was in deep thought. That woman, she saw something. Norma Selner. She had experience dealing with a slew of powerful hunters, but something about Jean Wu had freaked her out. What had she seen? A trace of the system? But although the system had set challenging tasks on occasion, it wasn't some fearsome being. Rather, it's my benefactor. But how would others see it? The assistant director had asked if he could reach out to Jean Wu at a later time. However, Norma appeared horrified at Michael's request. Her body language made it clear that she never wanted to see Jean Wu ever again if she could help it. Besides, Jean Wu was starting to have a sneaking suspicion that her ability would have no effect on him, since he was so fundamentally different from other hunters. No need to waste any more time. That was why he politely declined Michael's request. Jean Wu would never forget the stunned look on his face. By the way, what's with all this traffic? Jean Wu frowned at the sea of cars in front of him. See, this is why it's better to take the subway. He was wondering if there had been an accident when. The RRR, the RRR, the RRR. His cell phone, which he had plugged in to charge, vibrated. Jean Wu checked the caller ID. President Go? He had seen the president only a few hours ago at the funeral. So why the sudden call? Ji Wu picked up. Hunter Sung, this is Gunny Go. President Go smoothly explained the current situation unfolding in the middle of Seoul. Excuse me? A gate appeared in the middle of the road? No wonder. He'd had a feeling this was no ordinary traffic jam. He looked back to turn the van around but it was bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, so he couldn't move an inch. Jean Wu shook his head as he faced forward. President Go's next words were enough to eclipse his frustration over the traffic. Based on the evaluation of our staff, it's a B-rank gate. Would you like to take care of it? Whoa! Jean Wu was barely able to keep himself from laughing at this amazing news. It wouldn't do to be excited over something inconveniencing so many others. Ahem. Jean Wu cleared his throat. But can I enter the gate without a raid permit? Uh-huh. Hunter Sung, where do you get a raid permit? From the association. And who am I? Jean Wu stifled another laugh. You're the president of said association. Uh-huh. Please don't worry about it. Enter at will. Away so. I mean, thank you. Jean Wu smiled widely. He got out of the van and walked in the direction of the gate by following the emanating mana. He didn't have to park his vehicle, since the road was basically a parking lot by this point. Yes, this black hole you see here is a gate that appeared today in the middle. According to the information we've just received, this is a beer ink gate. Due to its high rank, a guild must be called in. Reporters had already surrounded the portal. The police were helping association employees cordon off the area. Hmm. As Jean Wu moved past the throng of reporters and approached the gate, an uptight-looking female employee blocked his path. Hold on, please! What do you think you're doing? The representative of the association put her hand on his chest to push him back. You can't just come in here like this. But no matter how hard she pushed with her small hands, Jean Wu was immovable. She eventually realized that he was a hunter, and a high-ranked one at that. Are you a hunter? Jean Wu showed her his ID. Her eyes nearly fell out of her head. S rank? J Jin was Song? That meant that this man was the hunter who'd performed so brilliantly against the magic beast ants on Jeju Island. She belatedly recognized him. Despite working for the association, she hadn't realized, since he looked different than how he'd appeared on TV. But in a crowd of this size, there would always be people who caught on faster. Huh? 
is that guy? It's Gene Woosung. Gene Woosung is here to personally take care of the gate. The frustrated civilians perked up with delight at the sight of him. Being late for appointments was the furthest thing from their minds as they cheered Gene Wu on. Regardless of this reaction from the crowd, however, the adamant attitude of the association rep didn't change. She hesitated before probing Gene Wu. WH, what brings you here? Did she even have to ask? There was only one reason for a hunter to be standing in front of a gate. Since it was self-explanatory, Jean Wu simply pointed at the gate over the woman's shoulder. As the rep briefly looked back, she hardened her resolve. Too many hunters had lost their lives for failing to follow rules and procedures, and for relying too much on their own powers. I'm sure that can happen to S ranks as well. She had been taught that the association existed in order to prevent these kinds of accidents. The safety of hunters was the priority of the association. Therefore, she couldn't allow someone as valuable as an S-rank hunter to get hurt. So she confidently spoke up. Even if you're an S-rank hunter, I can't allow you to ignore procedure. Jean Wu was speechless as he stared at her, dumbfounded. He hadn't expected this reaction. She began to think that she had gotten through to Jean Wu. Do you have a raid permit? Jean Wu shook his head. Well, even if you did, I can't let you go inside the gate without the minimum number of required squad members. She stood firm, but Jean Wu didn't think it came from a place of malice. She was simply a by-the-book type. Jean Wu scratched the back of his head. It seemed as if he had no other choice. Please give me a second. Jean Wu made an urgent call. As the call connected, he handed it to the rep. Here. She eyed the phone. Please. This call is for you. The association representative looked at Jean Wu suspiciously. WH, who is it? Another person you probably wouldn't allow in. She took the phone and her eyes widened as soon as she checked the caller ID. Ji gun he go? Was the person on the other end really? H hello? She answered the phone nervously. A deep voice replied on the other end. This is President Go. And sure enough, she didn't know where to look and her head kept bobbing up and down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will do, sir. Click. She returned the phone to Jean Wu with a defeated look. As he walked past her, Jean Wu spoke in a low voice. Thank you. Pardon? For worrying about me. You were just messing with me. Jean Wu quickly vanished into the gate. Ugh. The association rep was furious and cursed Jean Wu, sending him bad vibes. Please, God, make him fall and twist his ankle in the dungeon. But Jean Wu Sung had returned from Jeju Island without a scratch when it was overrun with S rank magic beasts. What could possibly happen to him in a B rank dungeon? At that very moment, screams rang out from every direction. Huh? What's happening? Why is the gate turning red? The black surface of the gate turned blood red after Jean Wu entered. It was a red gate. The name alone could send shivers down the spine. Oh! The rep panicked at the sight. Is this because of me? Of course, that wasn't possible, but she still felt guilty. As an association employee, she knew well that red gates were dangerous places that connected to unknown worlds and she was also aware that the survival of even high-rank hunters couldn't be guaranteed. Oh no! The color drained from her face as she imagined the worst-case scenario. If he really gets hurt, how many minutes had passed? As she continued to blame herself, she looked up from the ground, since she suddenly felt someone else's presence nearby. There was Jean Wu standing in front of her. Oh my! She startled like she had seen a ghost. Jean Wu grinned at her as he walked on by. 
The representative's face was even redder now than after her exchange with President Go. Jean Wu looked around and then approached the driver of a truck filled with potatoes. Sir, could you please sell me a sack? Excuse me? A sack of potatoes? Jean Wu shook his head. No, just the sack, please. Jin Ho Yu, the vice president, recruitment manager, legal representative, an accountant of the guild tentatively named Solo Play, brightly greeted Jean Wu as he entered the office. Welcome back, boss. Anything to note? No, boss. By the way, one of the applicants to be a founding member. Oh, right. Give me the list. I'll take a look, too. Seeing as how Jin Ho wouldn't let this matter go, he was probably dying to get this guild established. But it worked out since Jean Wu felt the same way. They needed one more founding member to meet the required minimum of three people to establish a guild. Even though the last person is just to fill the head count, it'd be better if they were hardworking, since we'll be spending a lot of time with them anyway. Jean Wu was nodding to himself when he noticed that Jin Ho looked somewhat down. What's the matter? The thing is, boss. Yeah. As you know, we need a lot of money to start a guild. High-ranked dungeons go for an incredible amount in auctions. And we'll have to pay a signing bonus to recruit a hunter, especially for this particular applicant. Jean Wu interrupted him. Is this good enough? Thud. Jean Wu dropped a potato sack on the floor. Hmm? Jin Ho curiously took a look inside the sack. It was full of valuable essence stones. Boss! WH what's all this? Jean Wu nonchalantly answered. I ran into a gate on the way here. In the few hours he'd been out of the office, Jean Wu had cleared a high-ranked dungeon he happened to run into and collected the essence stones just like that. You're incredible, boss. Jin Ho didn't think any more of it. There was no point in trying to apply logic to this man. Jean Wu was pleased to see Jin Ho's delight at the hall. He then looked toward the conference room. So what is she doing here? Huh? Oh, I meant to tell you. We have an applicant waiting, boss. Jin Wu's eyes widened. An applicant? Yes, boss. Who is it? The person in the conference room, boss. Did she say that herself? Yes, boss. But that didn't make any sense. Jean Wu strode over and opened the door to the conference room. The woman sitting inside had been quietly drinking the canned coffee Jin Ho had rushed out to buy her from the convenience store nearby since they had nothing in the office. She now turned to face him. What are you doing here? Jean Wu was flabbergasted. Payne calmly gazed up at him. Well, I wanted to join the guild. Had he heard her right? Maybe something was wrong with his ears. Hain Cha, the vice president of the best guild in Korea and one of the country's most powerful hunters, wanted to join a guild that hadn't even taken its first steps yet? The only conclusion Jean Wu could come to was that someone else was forcing her to do this. The thing was, who could possibly make Hain Cha do anything? Only one person in Korea could order her around like this. Did the president of the association put you up to this? Hain looked perplexed at the mention of President Go. Why would he? Ji Wu was confused, but she looked even more so. Okay, I need to relax. This was definitely a shocking and interesting development, but Ji Wu calmly pulled out a chair and took a seat opposite Hain. He silently observed her for a bit and concentrated. Time slowed down for him as he processed all the information he had on Hain. She's rattled. Her pulse, her breathing, her eyes. Hain was keeping a straight face, but nothing escaped Jin was high perception stat. But that didn't explain why she was trying so hard to join the solo play guild named Pending. Aren't you still under contract with the Hunter's Guild? asked Ji Wu. Normally, 
contracts between guilds and hunters were five years long. Hain had been evaluated as an S-rank hunter and joined the Hunters Guild two years ago. That meant she had at least three years left on her contract, provided she had signed on for only the five-year minimum. I can afford to pay the penalty fee. Jean Wu raised an eyebrow at Hain's casual answer. The penalty for breaking a contract was between two to three times the signing bonus. Considering how much the Hunters Guild must have paid to recruit an S-rank hunter like her, the penalty had to be a staggering amount of money. Jinwoo's attitude became more businesslike. The Solo Play Guild can't afford to pay for the kind of signing bonus someone of your level warrants, Hunter Cha. I is the name of the Guild Solo Play? That's the name the Vice President and I agreed on. Do you have an issue with it? No, not at all. Hain gave a small sigh before going on. I don't mind. I'm fine with not receiving a signing bonus. She was willing to pay an enormous penalty to leave the Hunters and agree to a new contract without a signing bonus. What is she up to? Jean Wu narrowed his eyes. They stared at each other for a while, but Hain had to look away. Her heart was beating even faster than before. Jean Wu focused on what he was hearing. His keen ears didn't miss the physical changes. Is she hiding something? Since things had come this far, Jean Wu couldn't continue without being direct with her. Why are you willing to go to such lengths just to join our guild? Like he thought, Hain pursed her lips, unable to answer easily. Considering how her face was turning red, he was now certain she was keeping something from him. Wait a minute. Jean Wu thought back to how differently Hain had been acting at the funeral. He wasn't sure what her end goal was, but it seemed like she'd been playing this for some time. Ji Wu waited for her to answer, but she wordlessly kept her head bowed for a while. But what could she have said? That although the monstrous ant had knocked her out, she could still sense Ji Wu by her side? That even as she plunged into darkness, his sin had comforted her? There were no words to describe how she felt at that time. Whatever I say, he'll think I'm crazy. Her heart had skipped a beat when she found out after the fact that Jean Wu had actually been on the island. She had been truly relieved that it wasn't just her imagination. And if she realized that if, in a million to one chance, she ever found herself in a situation where death was inescapable, she'd like for Jean Wu to be by her side. I want you to be with me until the end or something like that. How could she speak such cheesy words when just thinking them made her blush? Hain wasn't the romantic type, so spouting words like that seemed an impossible task for her. So she gave him a prepared response instead. I, she finally looked up and met his eyes. I'd like a simpler life. This wasn't exactly the truth, but it wasn't a lie either. While she couldn't stand the smell of other hunters, just being near Jin Wu helped her unwind. That was what she meant by simpler. Although Jin Wu interpreted her words differently, it still made sense to him. He nodded in understanding at her reply. He figured she meant that working with a smaller guild and leaving one as large as the hunters would make her life easier. From what he remembered, Hain was only 22 or 23 years old. The burden of being an S-rank hunter has probably been too heavy for someone so young, and doubly so when having to constantly face life-threatening situations like Jeju Island. Jin Wu himself had wanted to pack up and quit countless times when he worked for the association, so he could sympathize. Unfortunately, I feel bad for Hain, but Jean Wu still couldn't bring himself to just accept her. There was a reason he wanted to name the guild solo play. He planned to clear every dungeon. They booked for the guild by himself. He'd asked Jin Ho to find someone to fill the quota like they'd done for the C-rank dungeons only because the rule about the minimum number of members was unavoidable. All this was so that he had a method of leveling up. However, 
letting Hain join the guild would only invite trouble. Even if she didn't want a signing bonus, they'd still have to pay her a salary, wouldn't they? Signing on an expensive S-rank hunter they'd have no use for would be a waste for the country, since she wouldn't have anything to do. However, it'll look suspicious if I turn away an S-rank hunter for no reason, especially if she's waiving her signing bonus. So Jean Wu came up with a clever plan. Actually, there's a test to join our guild. Pardon me? The job listing didn't say anything, Abu. Jean Wu cut off the confused Hain. We only instituted the test recently, so our vice president seems to have forgotten to include it. Hain grew serious as soon as she heard the word test. What kind of test is it? Jean Wu was caught off guard. Is she serious? He'd expected her to walk out at the mere mention of a test as a matter of pride. Yet here, she was doing the opposite. It actually looked like he'd stoked her competitive spirit instead. By her stoic face, Jean Wu could sense a hidden passion burning. Is she one of those people who never turns down a challenge? Or was she just being stubborn? Either way, Jean Wu couldn't pretend he was joking and back down now. You have to battle a minion of my choosing. That was a definite blow to her self-esteem. Is your opinion of me really that low hunter Jean Wu saw? Strangely, Jean Wu could almost hear those words in her voice despite her unreadable expression as they silently regarded each other. Which minion are you going to choose? I'll pick an especially strong one for you, Hunter Cha. Works for me. She didn't back down. But Hain would never in a million years be able to guess who she'd be going up against or who the latest addition to his shadow army was. Jean Wu figured that as competitive as she was, she was also the kind of person who would acknowledge her defeat and give up. So he accepted the challenge. All right then, when is this test? Right now. Forming the guild was an urgent matter, so he didn't want to waste more time than necessary with Hunter Cha. Since the topic had been broached, they might as well get it over with. The location would be the gym at the Hunters Association headquarters. S-rank hunters had the privilege of using the gym anytime they wanted as one of the perks they enjoyed. Understood. Hain nodded. She also preferred to not drag things out. They rose to their feet together as if they'd planned it. Hold on. At that moment, Jean Wu was struck by a thought. He stopped Hain just as she grabbed the doorknob. Hunter Cha, please wait. Yes. No need to go out that way. Hain wasn't sure what he meant. The room had only one door, and surely Jean Wu wasn't suggesting that they go out the window. Jean Wu approached Hain. There's an easier way to get there. Sorry? In order to do that, I have to stand close to you. Is that okay? Oh, Hain recalled something President Beck had mentioned to her. Just as the Korean strike squad had been on the brink of death, Jean Wu had popped into existence behind him. Is he going to show me how he did that? She felt a lump in her throat as Jin Wu's face drew closer than she'd expected. Excuse me. Jean Wu gently wrapped his arms around her. He'd carried her bridal style around the ant cave so a hug wasn't that big of a deal to him. On the other hand, Hain's face instantly turned red, but she didn't push him away or try to break loose. What a nice scent. As Hain blushed, Jean Wu readied himself after carefully making sure she wouldn't slip out of his grasp. All right. There was something he'd wanted to test out, and this was as good a time as any. You might feel dizzy. It had happened to him the first time. At that, Hain wrapped her arms around his waist and whispered, Okay. Jean Wu looked straight ahead and wordlessly activated the skill. Shadow exchange. Vung. Jean Wu and Hain soundlessly fell into their shadows. At that exact moment, Jin Ho entered the room with tea and snacks he'd hurriedly picked up from the convenience store 
when he noticed that the meeting seemed to be running long. Please help yourself too. Jinho made eye contact with an embarrassed looking high orc shadow soldier. Crash! Jinho dropped the tray he was carrying, and the glasses shattered into pieces. WH what the? Frightened, Jinho squeezed his eyes shut for a second, but when he opened them, the shadow soldier had disappeared without a trace. But I definitely saw. He rubbed his eyes hard, shook his head, and looked around, but he couldn't find any trace of the magic beast. Have I been pushing myself too hard lately? For him to be hallucinating, he cocked his head, then turned around in search of a rag before abruptly stopping dead in his tracks. Where did the boss and hunter Chaco?